You're welcome to another basic organic chemistry class. In today's class, we'll be looking at the alkynes. Alkynes are the unsaturated hydrocarbon that contain at least two carbons connected by triple bonds, meaning that the least member of this family must contain two carbons, making it a time. This group of compounds are sp hybridized because of the presence of the triple bond, giving them linear geometry with bond angle of 180 degrees. Due to the presence of this triple bond, alkyne is more unsaturated than alkanes, having two pi bonds and one sigma bond. Their general molecular formula is represented as Cn H2n minus 2, where n is the number of carbon. Remember, the minimum number of carbon must be 2. Due to the presence of this triple bond in our kind, they are highly unsaturated than our kind, than our kinds. And they are classified into two, two main types, just like the alkynes. We have internal alkynes and terminal alkynes. Internal ones are alkynes where the triple bond are in the middle of the compound. While the terminal ones are the alkynes where the triple bond are, at, are located at the terminal carbons. In terms of stability, terminal alkynes are more stable. In terms of stability, internal alkynes are more stable than the terminal alkynes. In naming, IUPAC system have been employed in naming alkynes. First is to consider the long continuous carbon chain, which will cut across the carbon connected by this triple bond, which is their functional group. When naming this member of, when naming this compound, the functional group, which is the triple bond, must be given priority. Hence, naming must give the carbon that bears the triple bond the least number on the ring. Other substituents will be observed with respect to the naming of other hydrocarbons. Remember, irrespective of the position of this substituent on the, on the carbon chain, the alphabetical order must be observed. When there are more, when there are double bond and triple bond in a compound, double bond will be given priority in naming, meaning that double bond will be given the least number more than triple bond. And when there are other functional groups like hydroxy group, this functional group will be given priority over unsaturation. Remember, there are hierarchy in functional group. Typical example of naming. Looking at this compound, we can see that we have two functional groups. We have double bond and we have triple bond. So whenever we are naming, we are going to give this double bond priority over triple bond. That's why the correct format of naming this compound is starting with carbon that bears double bond. That's why cis bromo 4 chloro opt one in seven in because my double bond is carbon number one white triple bond is carbon number seven i cannot start by naming triple bond and giving it a priority it will be incorrect way of naming so whenever you're naming the alkane this double bond is going to be given lower locants over the triple bond another substitute will follow as shown on the slide now when naming and there are double bond and functional group or triple bond and all fun other functional group priority will be given to these functional groups example if i want to name alkane and i have hydroxy group i have to start with the carbon that bear the hydroxy group making the compound in all that is alcohol that is unsaturated. So that is why we have pent 4 in 1 all, meaning that this is 
unsaturated alcohol. Now looking at the one of alkyne, this alkyne has amino as at the terminal, making the compound an amine. Naming this compound, I'm going to give this amino functional group priority by giving it carbon number one. Then my triple bond is having carbon number two. So that's why the name of the compound is but two in one amine. Now, it's worthy of note that whenever my triple bond is not the, fun, the major functional group, meaning it's going to be YN, not YNE. Just like when double bond is not the parent name, I put EN. But when it's the parent name, I'll put ENE. -E. So whenever my triple bond is, is like a part of the functional group is not the parent name. I don't put Y N E. I'll put Y N. So that's why we have pen two E Y N one E M E. So it's not two E. The E is only when it is a the only functional group. So it means that the parent name is an alkyne. But when the when alkyne is like a substituent, I don't add the E, just like in alkene. Please note that is very important. When you're talking about isomerism, isomerism simply means a compound that has the same molecular formula but exhibits different structural formula. In isomerism of our kind, just like what happened in our kin, we are going to understand that isomer isomerism starts in carbon number four, which means it's only butyne that isomerism starts in our kind just like it does in our kin. So there are types, three types of isomerism that can exist in our kind, just like our kin. We have chain, position, and functional isomerism. This isom isomerism increases with increasing number of carbon in our kind chain. It means that the more the carbon, the higher the isomerism. Isomerism are just like twins. So the more the number of carbon, the more the existence of this isomers. In chain isomerism, this arises due to different in skeletal carbon arrangements, meaning that from straight chain, I'm having a branching. It means that there is different in the chain. This other chain was straight, the other one is branched. Typical example is when we have hex2 yin and we have four methyl pentuyin. It means that one of the methyl has been used as a branch. So these have the same number of carbon atoms, but the first one is straight, second one is branched, calling chain isomerism. The next isomerism is position isomerism. This is very simple because the position of this triple bond changes the identity of the compound. My terminal and my internal al alkyne are uh, position isomerism. The last on this is functional isomerism. Alkyne are isomeric with alkadienes because they are represented by the same molecular formula. Example is that my but one yin is similar to my buta one three diene making them functional isomers. Properties of alkyne. Because of the triple bond in alkyne, it relates to their properties. They are lightly soluble in polar solvent. So they are lightly soluble in polar solvent and totally insoluble in water because of their density. They are very less denser than water. Alkyne has slightly higher boiling point than alkanes and alkanes of comparable molecular weight, meaning that they are slightly higher, their dipole moment is higher than that of alkane and alkane because of the triple bond. The boiling point also increases as the number of this carbon atom increases. The SDT hybridization of alkynes made them more acidic than alkenes and alkanes. Alkene are more acidic than alkenes, while alkynes are more acidic than alkenes. 
This is the summary of their properties. From the table, it is evident that as a carbon atom increases, both melting point and boiling point also increases along with their density. How are these how are these alkynes prepared in the industry? Industrially, alkynes are prepared using calcium carbide. This calcium carbide method was employed in industrial production of this alkyne, especially acetylene. But a new, more enhanced process has been repl has replaced this carbide method, which is methane being pyrolyzed at very high temperature. This reaction is thermodynamically favored at high temperature. So it means that my alkyne can be prepared from carbide and can also be prepared from methane. The reactions of this alkyne are simply addition reaction due to the high unsaturation this compound exhibits so we talk about addition of hydrogen which is hydrogenation hydrohalogenation addition of hydrogen halide and halogenation addition of halides the mechanism of addition reaction is two sequential steps the first step remember the pi bond are very weak the first pi bond is going to be broken, forming alkane intermediate, and another molecule of the reagent to be added to form saturated alkane. So that is the mechanism of addition reaction in alkane because of its triple bond. Under hydrogenation, hydrogen molecule will be added using either platinum, palladium, nickel, or rhodium as catalyst. In all, the alkene is an intermediate, meaning that because I have two pi bonds to break, I need two moles of any of the reagents I need for this addition reaction to form a saturated compound. This is a typical example, a, example of hydrohalogenation. In this case, if we are dealing with symmetrical al alkyne, meaning that alkyne that when I when is divided from the triple bond is going to give me two equal parts, I don't need to think about Markovnikovs. But when I'm dealing with asymmetrical, that is unsymmetrical alkyne, Markovnikovs will be employed. When you're talking about Markovnikovs, simply means across this double bond, the carbon that bears hydrogen, more hydrogen will be given hydrogen. The one that bears less hydrogen will be given halide. Remember, we are talking about these two carbons connected by triple bond. So, for this example on the screen, the anti Markovnikovs will be employed because the compound is asymmetrical. In that case, I will need two moles of my hydrogen halide to achieve my at complete addition reaction to form my dihalide. Under Markovnikov's addition of hydrogen bromide is going to follow the same method. Alkynes are less slightly reactive than alkenes. It means that because they are they are highly unsaturated, they are not as re reactive as alkenes because you have to go two times for you to achieve your complete reaction. But in our kings, one mole is enough to do that. So that's why they are slightly less reactive than the alkenes. Under addition of hydrogen halide, whenever you're seeing peroxide, like said in our kings, is mean anti Markovnikovs. In this case, the carbon that bears hydrogen will be given more hydrogen will be given halide. The carbon that bears less hydrogen will be given hydrogen. That is anti Markovnikov's rule. Then, last is addition of halogen, which is halogenation. In that case, I need two moles of 
halogens to form my complete addition reaction in this case. The end of this alkene uh, class. And this is the end of hydrocarbons. I hope with this you understand the difference between alkene and alkyne are the additional pi bond, which means that any reaction that alkene is going to undergo with one mole, alkyne is going to undergo with two moles. So I see in the next class, I wish you success in every exam that has to do with basic organic chemistry. Thank you.